Hi, I'm Patrick Barone of the Barone Defense Firm, and I'd like to discuss with you first offense drunk driving in Michigan. If you have been charged with drunk driving in Michigan and your breath or blood test result is below a 0.17 and you have no prior offenses within the past seven years, there's no death and no injury, then you're looking at a first offense drunk driving. If it's a 0.17 or above on your breath or blood test, that's a super drunk. And that's the subject of another videotape that I've prepared and you can find more information about that on my website. But as far as a traditional first offense drunk driving, the punishments include the following. Up to 93 days in jail. The judge may give you all of those 93 days. You may spend no time in jail anywhere in between. It will depend on your prior record, the facts and circumstances of your case, the lawyer that you have representing you, and the judge that your case is assigned to. It will be important for you to discuss all of those factors with your lawyer before deciding what to do on your case. You don't want to plead guilty until you know how much, if any, jail time you're looking at. In addition to jail time, there's the driver's license sanction. Driver's license sanction for first offense drunk driving, no priors in the last seven years. It's 30 days no driving, followed by 150 days of restricted driving privileges. During those restricted driving privileges, you can drive to from your employment, to from necessary medical care, to from any court ordered probation, to from any necessary support groups or treatment that you're ordered to complete. Any of that information, any of those requirements, you can drive 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but it has to be within the allowable restrictions. In addition to the driver's license sanction and the jail time, it's a $100 to $500 fine, six points on your driving record, and $1,000 a year for two-year driver responsibility fee. In addition to all of that, there's a lot of potential collateral consequences, and again, that's the subject of a separate videotape. But what I've given you so far is a summary of the punishment that will apply from the court and from the Secretary of State for a first offense drunk driving. Here is a chart you can look at that summarizes all of it for you. If you've been charged with first offense drunk driving in Michigan and your lawyer has been able to negotiate a reduction to impaired driving, which is a very typical reduction, it's important for you to know the benefit of that reduction and the benefit of pleading guilty to the reduced charge before you go ahead with your plea. So here's how it works. Instead of a 180-day driver's license suspension with no driving for 30, followed by 150 of restricted, with an impaired driving, it's a 90-day restricted license. That's the single most important, biggest difference, and that's why most people who are charged with intoxicated driving plead guilty to impaired driving. Otherwise, the, the differences are really not that great. It's still up to 93 days in jail and it's still very possible for you to go to jail. Some judges will still put you in jail even for a first offense impaired driving. So it's important for you to discuss that with your lawyer before you plead guilty. Also, it's still an alcohol related misdemeanor. All the collateral consequences are identical. There's no difference there whatsoever. There's a somewhat smaller fine. Instead of a $100 to $500 fine, it's an up to $300 fine. Also, instead of six points on your driving record, it's four points on your driving record. And instead of $1,000 a year for two-year driver responsibility fee, it's a $500 per year driver responsibility fee. Otherwise, everything's identical. As I said, the biggest benefit is the driver's license sanction. Here's another chart for you to look at that has all of the driver's license and court-ordered punishment, including jail time, for an impaired driving. Okay, so now you've seen the difference between impaired driving and intoxicated driving. You have a pretty good idea of what the differences are in the punishments, but before you plead guilty, you'll want to talk to your lawyer to make sure that you're making the right choice and to find out exactly what will happen for you. If you want to know more, here's some additional contact information, and we'll look forward to hearing from you.